since I haven't showed you the outside of the truck, I wanted to do a little quick walk around, kind of show you what's going on. Um, first of all, <coughs> got the roof rack installed, all the lights and everything turning out pretty good. Cab's tilted right now, uh, working on getting a block heater installed, the oil line of death, trying to get that thing fixed up, and uh, change around some cool coolant lines and whatnot. There's a block heater, get in and put that in. Also had to rebuild the lift cylinder <coughs> up here for the tire carrier. It had a check valve that was froze on it, causing it not to drop down and it actually blew it up. So that sucks. Um, this here is my entry for my crawl through. So I haven't got that nothing painted yet. It's made of steel. I know everybody's doing it out of aluminum, but I prefer steel. Um, and then if I climb up here real quick. Um, of course, I got the idea from Broke Overland to do the Dynamat hood liner. Uh, before I did the hood liner, I actually wrapped it in a more generic Dynamat. And then I put the hood liner over that. So got the hood liner on there. Turned out great, helps a lot with the noise, and uh, got that dynamat down as well. Then up here, which this is kind of a weird spot for me to get to, I'm gonna open this real quick for you guys. So this right here, this is my Mr. Cool, 12,000 BTU, um, I think a 20 sear. AC condenser, so it fit very tightly. <laughs> I mean, I got like a quarter inch of clearance there. I do have clearance front to back. This is only about 13 inches deep. And then I ran my lines under it, coiled up. You're supposed to lay these flat. They say that um, if you coil them up vertically, you're creating a low point and uh, it can actually affect the cooling. So this is where my AC unit is gonna be mounted. And then this is the box. So I've got my um, original deck, which used to be mounted on the back of the truck, and I moved it to the side. So then I also moved this little cleat that holds my stairs. I moved that to the side, and now I've got my staircase, which I had to reinforce because it was the legs were breaking so I had to weld a piece of aluminum on there but now I've got a staircase with a nice handrail um, to get up onto the truck I used some spindle hinges and a piece of receiver tubing to make the hinge point greasable of course and so that's the patio I'd like to do some kind of a chain or rope uh, guardrail mostly because I have small kids and keep everybody safe. And then up here, we've got the extension that I built. So this uh, extension is made out of 16 gauge two by two steel, skinned in aluminum. Um, these are the rails here that house the um, staircase. And this is the uh, unit that I use to clip this thing down when it's in the stowed position. So I will insert a picture of that install for you guys to see. Uh, this is an original winch that was already on the truck. It works. So I just decided to use it. It looks like pretty bad, but it works. So I'm keeping it. And then it runs to a pulley system that runs all the way up to the top there. And then the wire comes down and attaches itself to here. And that's how we retract the deck. Moving on, I skinned the whole outside of the truck in 16 gauge aluminum. So the reason I reskinned it is because there were existing windows, you know, two windows on a standard uh, 1079 box that were patched over and the guy did a good job patching them over, but I wanted it to look clean like it was new, you know, a single plane, I guess you would say. So I went ahead and changed that. 
Then I've got my Arctic turn windows. I got some of these installed. There's some plastic on them so they look scratched. So disregard the fact that they don't look that good. But these Arctic turn windows are awesome. They installed great. Um, very high quality, highly recommended. Also got the Arctic turn door, which is pretty awesome. Got that thing installed. Again, really good quality. I'm super pleased with it. And then uh, one cool little thing that they provide is these little slam latches. So you got one there and there. So when you open your door, you can slam it shut. Then the inside of this door is really nice fit and finish. So it's got the shade in it for blackout. It's got the cubby. You just simply push this forward and it locks the door when you're inside. It's pretty awesome. So really happy with all the Arctic Turn products that I bought. Um, these are original stair steps that I removed off the back, threw them on the side. That allows me to get up to my roof hatch and uh, also allows me, I'm going to try not to blind you with that light, but it also allows me to put the um, straps onto my roof rack there when I'm strapping on my kayak. Moving on. There's also a window getting installed right here. You can actually kind of see through that window and I've got a roof hatch up there too. But that's today's uh, chore. Um, I've also been sealing all this stuff with a body caulking made by 3M. If anybody wants to know what that is, I can definitely add that in the comments. Um, so far it's worked really good. It's a urethane based caulking. I just mask, you know, mask both sides, caulk it. Um, smooth it with a finger and then peel it off and it seems really robust. I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with that This side is a little tight over here. I don't have much room between my shop and the truck But you can see I've got this whole side skinned as well and I've got uh, another arctic turn window here um, One cool thing about these LMTVs that I really like is this NATO plug so the NATO plug is awesome because you can charge your batteries, which I know a lot of you already know about this. You can charge your batteries through this port here. And uh, so one thing that I'm doing is the LMTVs are kind of known for having alternator problems or at least voltage regulator problems. And they're very expensive. They're like $2,000 and relatively hard to find. So my plan is I'm gonna have a generator, a backup generator for when my solar system isn't up for the task. And uh, I bought a no-co charger, and I went on to Midwest Military Equipment, and I purchased a uh, um, NATO adapter. So I'm going to be able to plug my 24-volt no-co charger into the generator and then into the NATO port if my alternator ever fails so I can keep driving. So it's kind of a backup for it. Um, other than that, you know... Just a truck. Here's the interior tour. Um, there's some crap laying on the floor, but other than that, it's pretty well cleaned up so you guys can get a good idea of what I've got going on. Um, we got most of the starboard in today, so that was a great achievement. I showed you how I've been doing it um, a few times and I got some more windows installed, roof hatch installed, and things of that nature. However, um, I wasn't able to film all that because I had some dead batteries. So I went ahead and got them charged up and uh, here we are. So I'm going to flip the camera so you guys can see what I see. So I guess we start over here. Um, this right here is where my pass through is actually gonna be. There's a bunch of stuff in there, but it's an aluminum frame that I built. And then of course my dynamated interior foam pad that is blocking it from the cab. And then from the, um, from the board to the aluminum, 
from the starboard, I caulked those lines in with Cora Pop. So, decent finish there. This over here is actually gonna be a linen closet for my bathroom. The toilet and shower will be in this corner. So that I'm gonna waterproof from the exterior and build a nice uh, cabinet door out of more starboard. So that'll hold toilet paper, um, towels, that sort of thing. Where the pile of tools is, is where the toilet and the shower will be. It'll come out to, almost out to the window here. So this will be toilet shower area combination. Um, behind this piece of starboard here is one of the Arctic turn windows. The sink will go here and the stove will go here, which we're probably going to use a electric stove just because uh, trying to stay away from propane. Here's the interior of the Arctic turn door. Um, really sweet door. Love it. It's got the blackout blind. Just push it for lock. It's very, very good fit and finish. I'm very happy with that. And then, of course, over here, we've got um, another spot where the starboard is not up yet. Moving on to the back of the truck. And this is going to be the berth. This is going to be where we're going to sleep. Um, underneath, this will be paneled off here. And everything will pretty much go under here related to electronics. 3000 watt inverter by Magnum. Um, two Dakota lithium, 2000 amp hour, or not 2000, 200 amp hour batteries. I wish there were 2000. And uh, all my AC circuitry, DC wiring, everything's gonna come in here. And I'm gonna try to build this on a platform about halfway up. And then the upper half will be accessible by lifting up this panel. And then there will be a shelf in here where we can store stuff. So that'll be pretty cool. And then actually there will be a large piece of PVC in the V back there, like a 12 inch piece of PVC pipe, sewer pipe, that I'm gonna run into a 12 inch Arctic turn door. And that is gonna be for my fishing pole storage because I like to fish. So climbing up here, you can see we got the starboard down on this back wall. Turned out pretty decent. And uh, over here will be a closet. So that's where I'm gonna store my clothing. And there we got the Arctic turn roof hatch with screen and blackout and LED lighting. So that's that. Up in this corner, I'm running a 110 outlet for, I don't know, charging phones. I'm gonna put a little shelf up there. This will be by your head as you're sleeping. So that'll be where we're charge, charge station. Over here, same thing. The only difference here is I'm gonna do a um, 12 volt charge station as well. So I've got AC and DC wired right there. So then moving along, now we're at the driver's rear. Um, the bed will stop, you know, this line. This is where my, I believe it's a 195 isotherm fridge is gonna be. So it's like 54 inches tall. So down low here, I'll have a couple of drawers and then the refrigerator, which will come up to pretty much full height, you know, 70 inches or so, about six feet. So that'll take up 24 inches, and there'll be like a 15 inch pantry right here, um, which would be full height, 75 inches, which 75 inches, by the way, is from the floor to this conduit um, chase, which I'm leaving, because I think that thing is awesome for running wiring, plumbing, whatever. It was original to the military, and uh, I'm leaving it because I think it's totally useful. And then I'm actually gonna glue my LED lights. There's covers that go on these, and I'm gonna glue LED lights or rivet or something, LEDs onto these that broadcast out. Because right now, I've got a perfectly flat ceiling that has no penetrations. It's three and a half inches thick of solid foam. It's very stable, and frankly, I don't wanna compromise it. So I'm not putting any holes in it for lighting or anything. Um, moving on, another Arctic turn window. These things are great. 
just click for detents, close, fall in, close them. I don't have the screens installed yet because I'm waiting to do that till pretty much done with the project. But anyway, so fridge there, pantry there, then it starts dinette. So dinette runs about seven feet, so that way the sleeping area of the dinette will be six feet. It'll run from about here all the way to the corner. This is where my kids will sleep. I have two young kids. And under the dinette will be four tanks. So one, two, three, four, nine inches tall. So the dinette will be raised. And that's gonna give me 84 gallons of fresh water. Another thing about water, back over here under the bed, um, I got this idea from Everlanders and I'm going to do the uh, Pepsi kegs with compressed air for my potable drinking water. So I'll have 84 gallons of, you know, dish water, shower water, um, that sort of thing. And then I'll have 10 gallons that'll be completely separate, which I can add on to. That'll be run off of compressed air. It'll run off its own separate faucet on the sink. And that'll be for drinking only. So we don't have to, you know, hopefully don't have to add chemical or anything to our water to make it make it decent. I lived in a camper for a year uh, while I was building my home and uh, it was horrible as far as water taste and smell. Once they sit in those poly tanks, it just it's just not that good to me. So I think those Pepsi cakes will be a great way to fix that. Um, and then, so the dinette will go here and there will be a, a table that'll push down, which the table is, the base of it is an aluminum leg that I found on West Marine. I actually got a tip from a guy that was building a um, ambulance. I don't remember his name, but he's got, a, he's got a YouTube video out there about a tour of his ambulance. And it was, um, he picked up this ambulance from Yellowstone. But anyway, he did this really cool single pedestal where you push the table down, and I thought that was awesome. So you'll push the table down, then the cushions on each side of the dinette will fold down, and then uh, that'll give the sleeping for my kids. And then, so right here, so right here, we've got three feet of dinette, and then back here, the dinette's actually gonna continue past and butt right into the shower wall, or the, the bathroom wall. And so you'll, you'll be sitting at the dinette. I gotta figure out how to do a hinged back. So my door for entry will actually be here and it'll be part of the back of the dinette. So you'll be sitting at the table and at the level of your butt will be the pass-through. So that's kind of where we're going with it. Um, also up here will be my mini split, which is a Mr. Cool uh, 12,000 BTU. And I've got the compressor already mounted outside. And so all I've got to really mount is the actual interior unit. And then there's also a compartment back here that I'm kind of undecided on what to use it for. I may put my hot water heater in there. I have a six gallon Kuma hot water heater. And I'm thinking that can go back there. Um, might be a good spot for it. A few other things that we've got going. Most of it is gonna go back here under the bed. It includes the diesel engine heater, the planar diesel cabin heater. Both of those are going under there. I'll also have a, it's called an Arctic Fox, which will go in the tank and allow me to open valves and run coolant through my fuel system, through my fuel tanks to keep my fuel temperature above freezing so I don't have as many issues with gelling. So I'm gonna be running that. And let's see, what else? I think that just about covers it. Um, so I hope you liked the video. Subscribe, like it, share it. Relatively new channel. So, you know, depending on what you guys think of what I got going on here, we'll kinda let me know if I should keep doing this or not. And if there's any questions you have, leave it in the comments. Otherwise, have a good one.